Now that Esper Familiars is banned due to Cloud of Fairies being banned, mm -hmm. but this Freed from Real deck is very good. It is yeah. a thing. It's a thing we're definitely going to see some utilization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it interacts um, at instant speed. After yeah. that, in second place, we have Antonio, who's playing Kalotha Jeskai. We all already saw him That's on right. camera. Yeah, yeah, picking up the second, perhaps the third game in the match against uh, Sam Nelson, yes. last, last round's finalist. That is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. Um, what else do we got? We have Blue Black Delver, called the Jess guy, a Mono Black Control deck, Elves, right. a Tron deck. John Barber's playing Tron. Interesting. We haven't seen him on camera. Like no, we haven't. Let's try and get him on camera because we've only had Tron for one game. Where is John Barber? Yeah, he's, uh, he's on there table he's four. Table four. Warren Woodward as well. Okay. Uh, I would, I mean, I, I got no problem seeing yeah. that. Uh, we might have Mono Black Control. There's, you know, there's a lot of Mono Black Control here, so we might have to deal with seeing Mono Black Control more yeah, than once. There's not a, there's not really anything else we haven't seen. We haven't seen the blue, the blue red what cyclops is this black deck. Red control deck. Uh, that's a really good question. Should yeah. we get that on camera, Sean, Sean Brown? Brown? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, faced off against Stephen Hightower again, playing mono black control. Okay, well we've got to get one of those on camera regardless. That's I'm right. not sure what the correct option is for which one we should choose. Yeah, I would love to see this black red control deck. Right, I think it's our last that. chance to do it. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. We're gonna get uh, Sean Brown's match on camera. Sean Brown's match on camera. I'm not sure his opponent is. Um, but yeah, so we have now finished our feature match area. Yeah. This is how we do it in the big leagues, guys. We just kind of sit around and look at paper and computers yeah. all day. We're like, do we want this one? Uh, one Sean one? Brown is on black red control. I don't yeah. know what his opponent's playing, though. And I think it's Stephen Hightower again. Oh, right, right, right. We yeah. may have seen him on camera once already. Yeah. But it is. Well, there's only so much. Due to the pigeonhole principle, there's, there's only so many rounds we can have with all fresh people in the game. Yes. There's only so many. I'm trying to think about how to say this. There's only so many slots that we can fill up with only so many people. When I was in college, yep. I had I was in math classes where we learned about a thing called the pigeonhole principle. Pigeonhole principle. Yeah, I did learn about that as well. That the pigeonhole principle says that if you have x holes mm -hmm. and uh, x plus one pigeons, mm -hmm. there's got to be at least one hole that has two pigeons. Yes. Very literally true. was described to me in this way. Yeah. Like literally holes, literally pigeons. Yeah. That's gross. I mean, it's the, the mentality isn't that it's gross. It's like they're little coops. They like live with a little hole in the wall with like oh. a little front door hanging out. You know, those little like stubs that are on birdhouses. Oh, that's way cooler. I actually thought of like a table, like a whack-a-mole table, oh, okay. except like you just like stuff the pigeon inside of the <laughs> hole. And I'm like, what is it? I literally have never thought about it in any other way. Okay. Um, yeah. So the pigeonhole principle, the main way to look at it is if you have two pools that you don't really know how many people are in, yeah. you can look at the relationship between the two quantities of numbers and figure out what's going to be the limiting value. So if you know that you have X pigeons and uh -huh. Y pigeonholes, uh -huh. you can figure out rather than calculating which one is going to run out first, you can just uh -huh. look at the numbers and whichever number is smaller will That's be the limiting funny. factor. I don't, is that an application of the pigeonhole principle? Yeah. I, I thought that was I thought that was the pigeonhole principle. N, N compared to N plus one is an application of the pigeonhole principle. I see. But and compared to n plus two is also the same application. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. And so I it's mainly looking at two. Two. it's okay, okay. Yeah, it's mainly looking at where they run into each other, where right. the collision is, is where you run out of data. Okay, I see. I see you. Mm -hmm. That's see. mainly what it's for. Um, so okay. yeah, we've got this. Uh, it. Well, this red black control. I wasn't really sure what to say besides the fact that the name of the deck is Bite It, Sc Bite It, You Scum, <laughs> which is a pretty good name. Yeah. Oh, and we've got Stephen. Oh, Tower Stephen Hightower's on Elves. Elves. Uh, right, right, minor. right. Okay. So yeah, we have our seventh and final round of Swiss starting just about now. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to head down to the match? Looks like we're going down there now. We'll pop down. Yeah, let's let's take a look at these guys shuffling up. And here we get to see, uh, so this is the more stock build of Elves that I'm familiar with, mm -hmm. featuring eight of those turn one mana accelerators in uh, in addition to the four distant melodies and just a bunch of good elves. Yeah, yeah. So we've got three Llanowar elves, three Finhorn elves, and two Elvish mystics, all functionally the same. Mm -hmm. One of them's from Ice Age, one of them is from the New Era, and one of them doesn't make any sense because it's Llanowar elves, and then there's only one elf on the card. That's right. You know, the seventh edition art has two elves. Mm -hmm. That's right. But it still only taps for one, and it's a one one, so. Well, I mean, well, in Llanowar, the elf, the, the average elf is small. Okay. It's like a half half. Okay. That's why Llanowar Elves needs to two of them okay. to, summon, uh, to sum up, aggregate into a wall. Would you say that one Llanowar Elf is the same size as a little girl? I don't want to talk bad about the Llanowar <laughs> clan. As you know, the punishment for breaking a <laughs> branch in Llanowar territory is one bone broken. Yeah, one bone for each branch broken. That is correct. What card is that? That's Llanowar Elves. Oh, that's the text. Okay, <laughs> I couldn't remember the fla which flavor text that was from. I remember that that was from the flavor text I, of an elf. I felt so good. Like, I remember the flavor text exactly. Ah, the player's matching off. 
See, some people are all about odd even, some people are all about high roll. I like yeah. high roll more just because it's a competition now for who gets yeah. to go first. It's not just I roll and then we determine it that way. It's mm -hmm. I'm battling you with dice to figure out who deserves the, to go first who more. Who deserves it. You gotta want it. You gotta want it. You can't just want it. You gotta need it. So Steven's got, it looks like a four land hand, a little high on the mana as it's a very light mana curve. And Sean has a turn two Kumbaj, which is, I believe, right? Yeah, he's got uh, a Swamp and a Game Lord. Okay, yeah, I was checking to see, like, I saw that he had at least uh, one of the Rakdos uh, Karus, yeah. Rakdos Pernirian, I think? Oh, I thought it was uh, the Red Black Game Lord. Oh, uh, you're right. He does have that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Sean, Sean Brown's Black black Red Control deck featuring many of the tools in the Mono Black deck, except he's eschewed some of the the Swamp Counting uh, in the form of Pestilence and Trenchless Corruption. Instead, he's got Firebolt and Lightning Bolt. Mm -hmm. uh, Lightning Bolt, Instant Speed 3 damage, Firebolt, Sorcery Speed 2 damage. But with Flashback. With yeah, Flashback on 5 mana, mm -hmm. you have to run it back. So this deck pretty looks like it's pretty well positioned to go very long. The, the big thing that I think uh, this deck gains out of going red is you get to play Terminates and Lightning Bolts. Big fan of Terminate. I think Lightning Bolt is also very powerful in this format. Very tempo-oriented, and one-for-ones yeah. are pretty much what every removal spell is. Yeah. And most creatures are pretty small, so right. yeah. Lightning Bolt kills its need. Firebolt, I think, very, very good. And exceptionally underplayed, because there's no red deck that wants to go long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kodotha Jeska usually plays one or two Firebolts. Oh, yeah, big fan of that. Okay. It, the deck gets... It always has stuff to do with its mana, so <laughs> that's certainly a thing you can do with the mana. Yeah, five mana, not a problem. Yeah, we, uh, we see the elf player going down to five, might be taking it down to four. Uh, super unfortunate way yeah. to start his it's final tough. round of Swiss here. Mm -hmm. Especially with the hand that Sean has. Yeah, it's Turn got yeah, seven cards. Seven cards, <laughs> what, what a, a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Kumbaj Witch is a big deal. Kumbaya, my lord. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Steven, uh, Steven already shaking his head. Can't feel good about this match. Although, hey, you know, I would say don't give up. I, per I know that I have won matches on four cards. I know you've done it. Mm -hmm. We've all done it. I, yeah, I think I've done it. Maybe not four, but definitely five. I won on five very recently. Uh, yeah, I was playing standard, and uh, my five included three lands and an Anafenza. And then That's my opponent couldn't kill the Anafenza, and he was playing Rally, so I was. just blanked his entire deck. It was awesome. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, you don't really need to worry about having the same number of cards if one of your cards is worth eight of their cards. Yeah. So it looks like Steven kept a no-lander, ships the turn to Sean, Sean's going to go ahead and gain a life uh -huh. off of the land that he played that Steven forgot to play. Yeah, Elected no, not to. Yeah, no, Steven, even if Steven draws a forest, Sean's going to play Quambo Dreshes and the game is going to be over. Yes. I, I literally do not think that Steven can win this game unless Sean does not draw a spell for the rest of the game. I think even if he doesn't, I'll still take Steven... Uh, I'm sorry, I'll still take Sean in a, in a yeah, landslide. Yeah, very high. Steven would have to basically draw the nut draw. And now his plan likely to be you can get as much information out of, as possible out of his opponent. He's uh, Rager. I'm gonna start the clock off. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw a little combo there. Gain a life and then lose oh. a life to Frexian Rager. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Very true. Draw oh. it's a forest. forest. We got a forest this time. But Steven's just gonna give the thumbs up and yep. <laughs> is he gonna pass the turn or is he gonna play a mana dork? So he, oh, he can't play I, that I like playing that Middle Sentinel. I think you need to. It doesn't die to the Kubash, which is in play. So That's true. And this is instead going to die to the Chainer's Edict in the hand. Yes, very true. Very true. Is Sean, is Sean in commanding position here? <laughs> Second combo, which is... Steven's a good sport. We're playing this one out, I'll say. Has not scooped yet. Pretty impressive. I think Sean is trying to convince him to concede. And once Sean realizes it's futile, he will play a Kumbaj Witches and then try again to see if uh, Stephen will concede. How about this? Yeah, mm -hmm. the, yeah word's not going to achieve Chain what you. a spell can do. Very true. Yeah. Chain Train. Attack for three and ship a turn, I imagine. Uh, he gets to play uh, Rakdos Carnarium to reset Ooh. his... Uh, Gayland? What is that thing called? Bloodfell Caves? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, no, that's right. Mm -hmm. Sounds right. Sounds what's, right the, sounds right. what's the refuge, the red-black one? Akum Refuge. Akum Refuge. Akum. Rhymes with Doom. This Akum. is a DBZ joke. Okay. To be surprised if... Uh, I missed the DBZ, DBZ joke. That's a shame. You, were, you may recall the, the character from the Ginyu Force with the giant shock of, with the big shock of red hair. Uh, it's been so long since I've seen Dragon Ball anything. That's a shame. Uh, you know Gaiden, or I think, DBZ Gaiden? 
came out recently? It's I think like, so. That's the reboot, right? Yeah. Well, not like the reboot, but the... The edited version where all the, the powering up has been yeah. cut? Well, I think that's Dragon Ball Z Kai, right? That's right. Budokai. Budokai? Is that what it's called? Okay. I think it's Budokai. I can't remember. Yeah. I'm not a huge anime watcher. I, don't, I feel like DBZ doesn't really count as anime. Very true, very true. You know? It's like, if that's a, well, I suppose. It's something that, you know, at one point I used to pay attention to, but that was many years ago. Yeah, it's, the show just feels a lot better if you're watching it, like, after school with a, with a yeah. soda or something. Yeah, a soda and, like, some Totino's pizza rolls. Ooh, I'm thinking Bagel Bites, actually. Ooh, Bagel Bites will do it, too. That's right. I'm all over that. I'm a big fan of Bagel Bites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had to decide which, which network you wanted to watch for three hours straight when you got home from school, because all of them were good. Yeah, yeah. You, you watched Saved by the Bell. <laughs> WB Kids. He's a big fan of that one. You had Fox. Pokemon was on Fox. Was it on Fox? Yeah. yeah. Fox Kids. That's right. And then they, what else did they have on that channel? I think Toonami they, was yeah. around. Oh, that yeah. Point. I feel like Toonami's far, far and away your best option there. Mm-hmm. Got some chair dragging going yeah, on. A lot, was, ambi- a lot of ambient noise. Yeah, I was a little surprised by that. I wasn't yeah. really prepared. My brain was not ready. We got a Phyrexian Rager coming down. I'm pretty sure that Steven, if I was in Steven's place, I would have conceded a long time ago. Yeah, I might have conceded after the combo twitches. Like, don't even Probably. play Probably. I might have conceded when I looked at my four and been like, I, it's sad that I have to keep this and I'm scrying a land, or scrying nothing to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, Steven looks like he drew all of his lands for this game in his first opening hand. Yes. And has not hit a land since, which, you know, you don't really need to when you got mana drops like that. Oh, there's a Canary. There it is. Finally hit a land drop. Reset the Blood Hole <laughs> Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. Can't miss a land drop here. Mr. Titania, not nice. Steven's going to go ahead and scoop him up. Not particularly close to this game. Going to the board, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see, look what at these the, we'll see what the elf deck has in oh, store. I, I, those are the deck lists. What are these? These are other deck lists. Yeah, those are old deck lists. I don't want those deck lists. They don't mean anything to me. They're not real. <laughs> so I'm looking at, oops, sorry. I'm looking at Steven's sideboard, and, you know, he doesn't really have a whole lot of cards that matter in this matchup. Rap and Vigor is the big one. Yeah, big, big fan of Rap and Vigor. Two mana instant lets you regenerate every creature that you control. I think that's about it. I could yeah. see, yeah. There's an argument for Luminous Rain, especially against a red deck. I suppose, but, I mean, he didn't really see the, like, burn part of red. He saw yeah. that, like, this is more control. Yeah, kill your creature. I imagine he's got to see Terminates coming. <laughs> That's, that's kind of the extra value you get from Flash and Red this yeah, deck. You get slightly cheaper removal. Yeah, whereas on Sean's side, I'm looking at two electric I'm that looking at good. some bottle nose. Ooh, I like that card a lot. Uh, Duress, not so good. Lightning. Lightning, a card that I, I would say is criminally underplayed in this format. Yeah, I think that card's very powerful. I think that card's actually very powerful in many formats. It just mm-hmm. doesn't see any play. Right. Is it you need... You need a Jun deck to play Blood Braid Elf to really get value out of Lightning, Basically, I think. Yeah. You know, you can't really go wrench mind and lightning. Your opponent can just have played a one drop and then like plays a four drop. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter if they're hellbent. You've spent your first three turns doing basically nothing while they have like a board. Yeah. That's really the problem. Is it doesn't generate any board pressure. It's a lot better if your opponent is playing Jace the Mind Sculptor. That's true. Because then they go turn four, Jace the Mind Sculptor, brainstorm, and so far ahead, and then you lightning them. Discard Destroy, two cards. Yeah. Discard two cards, so they're losing the brainstorm effect, yep. and then they're also losing their Jace. So you basically three for one them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, interesting that a common gets better the more mythics are in the format. Absolutely. Hmm. Very meta-defined card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just don't think it's great in this meta. Yeah. At the Card Kingdom Popper event. It's uh, well, yes. <laughs> the wrong meta for Blightning, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. It looks like Steven agrees that not a lot of good cards to bring in against this, well, against a mono black deck. Yeah, I don't even know how good Rap and Vigor is here. It's not great. Yeah, yeah, he agrees. Oh, oh, looks oh. like looks like he elected to bring him in. He was kind of on the fence about it. I, I certainly see the value in bringing it in, but I also see the value in not bringing it in, so... Yeah, yeah. Sean taking that first game on the back of, well... Oh, well, we get to four from Steven, and then missing two land drops, and then Sean resolving a turn two Kumbaj Witches, and then the game not being over at that point, yeah, I think was really the, the nail in the coffin, if you will. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, really, it was just demoralizing Steven even more. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, on the, uh, on the elf side, it's possible that, like, boarding out a couple virtual rangers is reasonable, especially against, like, a black deck that could have access to Pestilence or Crypt Rats, or... Uh, Something as weird as like Martyr of Ashes. Ooh, low spicy speaker. meatball. I'm a big fan of the Martyr spells too. Yeah, they're I fun. The blue Martyr. one's fun to play, that's for sure. Yeah. I must have spent so much time trying to figure out how to make wizards happen. Mm-hmm. Just like Fetch, I'm not trying to make wizards happen. Yeah, yeah. You really need something like. I think you need a Riptide Lab and Spell Setter Sprite to really make wizards happen. No, fully. Makes sense. Even something as simple as Patron Wizard. Mm-hmm. That would do it. Good. Yeah. Wizard de Patron. I think it's Sorcerer de Patron, actually. So, that's really good. <laughs> I already think Patron Wizard is a cool creature, mm-hmm. but, you know, in Spanish. So, 
full name. Senor. Senor. Senor Patreon. <laughs> Senor Patron. <laughs> At least it's not Grim Patron. That's a first time. Hey, get in here. That's Everyone, a, yeah. get in here. It took me a second there. <laughs> yeah, it did. You know, on my, on my lunch break, I uh, sat next to someone playing Hearthstone in the bar. Yeah, me yes. too. Uh, it was probably the same person. It quite possibly is. We were talking about how unfair piloted Shredder is. Yeah, that card's very good. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of problems I have with Hearthstone. One of the big ones is that there's often a lot of strictly optimal lines. Yeah. And when you have that happen and there's no like figurative decision, a lot of the skill of the game, I feel, is removed due to the fact that if you're somebody who's very new to the game and you make the exact same obvious play that someone who's been playing the game for five years has, mm -hmm. skill doesn't really play that huge of a factor. You know what I mean? I think you're right. I feel like Magic is a game where you have to make multiple decisions per turn, and making the wrong one or two can be the difference between you and the loss. Yeah, I don't really feel that's the case for Hearthstone. <laughs> so it looks like we're going to seven. We're just commenting on our Hearthstone memes. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, get on that fucking pain tech. That, dog, there's got to be a joke dog, there. Dog. Let's talk about it. I just want to talk about Flaring Pain the card. Yeah. So there, so Flaring Pain came about right after a card, Prismatic Strands. Yeah. Got I do not remember what Prismatic Strands does. So Prismatic Stra mind. Strands is a three minute instant. It costs, it's white and two. You choose a color and you prevent all damage dealt by sources of that color this turn. Yeah. It was a huge blowout in a lot of limited situations. I can see that. One sided fogs, absolutely. Exactly. Ah, Steven draws a land and spells. Uh, keeps, this is a one lander with two mana dorks, though, so he's pretty much got to untap. And Sean might just be starting with a Baron Moor tapped. Yeah, Baron Moor into Mountain means he's not going to be able to cast. No that. turn two Kumbaj, which is. Oh, but he does have a Swamp to follow it up. Absolutely. Steven leads with uh, the, elf worst, Mystic. the worst turn one elf. Yeah, and against Kumbaj. Reality Acid, that can be sometimes. Or I was thinking uh, Arbor Elf, actually. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that's actually the worst mana dork out there, I oh, think. That's fair. He's rewarded with a second land, which is pretty big. He's going to be able to deploy this turn. This I think you just play Timberwatch Elf, right? Because then all your guys are safe from the rule spells. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Timberwatch Elf is like far and away the best way for this deck to end games quickly, mm -hmm. which is super relevant. Does he will be able to attack for at least five next turn. Does he have enough mana to... No, he doesn't. To play Birch Lore Rangers plus another mana dork. He does not. He, well, he does. He can play Birch Lore Rangers, play a, play a summoning sick one mana creature. And play another one drop creature or is a two drop with the aid of the Elvish Mystic. Absolutely. Uh, so he could cast that Priest of Titania this turn, but I'm, to be honest, I still like casting Timberwatch Elf as soon as possible. I thought Timberwatch Elf costed three. It does. Okay, so, so you can't you cast Timberwatch Elf this turn because of him electing to play Mana Dork? Yeah, but he does instead cast that Priest of Titania, which is still good. Very reasonable. Titania is down, so next turn Steven will have a trillion mana. Correct. If that Priest of Titania survives, as Sean flicks yeah. past Terminate, mm -hmm. which uh, could remove the Priest from the field right now. Yeah. Could spell Sudden Death for that Priest of Titania. It looks like it's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah, can't really wait until, can't wait till any later Steven might have. Rap and Vigor. No, Terminate can't be regenerated. Oh, right. Yeah. God, I always forget about that. Oh, oh, that's a good point. The regeneration clause is huge. Yeah. Not, yeah, actually, not very huge, actually. Very yeah. uncommon. <laughs> very uncommonly comes up. Yeah, when does a creature ever regenerate? Mm -hmm. Is yeah, Steven now looking... Oh, oh, here comes Lissalana Hunt Minister. I imagine so. He can cast it. It's only a 3-3. Three, three, and, mm -hmm. again, delays him from casting that Timberwatch Elf, which is, I think, what he needs to be doing right now. Absolutely. I think he needs to resolve Timberwatch Elf, because if... If Sean draws a untapped black source next turn, he'll be able to play the Kumbaj Witches, and then Steven is locked out from playing the uh, Timberwatch Elf for the rest of the game. Well, not rest of the game, but it'd be pretty bad to play. Yeah, it's well. I think just getting it out as fast as possible prevents the black red control deck from going off. And mm -hmm. Steven can almost certainly ascertain that his deck, his opponent's deck, is trying to go long. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a uh, <laughs> Sean confirming that each is <laughs> tapping for a green. Yeah, they're not together tapping for a green. They're yeah. tapping for one green. And Virtual each. Ranger attacking solo. Mm -hmm. Down to nineteen. That's right. And now First Steven's going to be able to go wide against the control. Oh my god. Too much, which is another draw. Oh. She had a swap had in, his, okay. in his open hand. I would have played the Kumbaj, which is on turn two, then. Um, it's too risky to let your opponent untap with Priest of Titania, I, I suppose. With only two cards in hand, though, it's not that threatening. Uh, he had three. Well, well he was going to draw the third. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And now, oh-ho, oh, oh, oh it's just a melody. Oh, that's yeah. certainly the draw you want right now. Yeah. He can cast it, draw four cards. <laughs> it still isn't casting Timberwatch Elf, which I think is... Can you play Timberwatch Elf and then cast it? Is that uh, one? Not quite. No. Uh, with Priest of Titania. It, it's an option. Mm -hmm. Three, and then tapping the Bursal Rangers plus Huntmaster yep. for Disability. I think Actually, don't agree with that. I think I want to yeah, attack with the 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, absolutely. It's a Kumbaj Witch. It's a 1-3. Three. 
Swing into that bad boy. And now Steven gets to draw four cards here. Pretty reasonable. Yeah. Four mana, four cards is a pretty reasonable trade. Draws an island. Yeah, mm, that's pretty nice. Yeah, not hasn't, really. hasn't played a land for the turn either. Yeah. Uh, well, I imagine that Virtual Rangers is going to be first to get slain. Very reasonable. Oh, and he might be able to play a two drop as well. Mm -hmm. uh, That'd be so very good yeah. here. Dwine into lead would be a very powerful play. Oh, for sure. Even something as simple as Sylvan Ranger is pretty mm. good. Absolutely. Let's see what it is. Uh, I don't recognize that promo yeah, at all. That's Sylvan Ranger. Oh, okay. Yeah, two mana, one one version of uh, Savic Wayfinder mm -hmm. or Borderland Ranger. It's an elf. Comes in with a buddy. Gets to find a forest. Put him in the hand. Now yeah. Steven actually has access to two mana right now. Or uh, to one more mana. Mm -hmm. Should he say cheese? Yeah. Well, one more mana, right? Well, yeah, that's right. But, but no one mana spells. Oh, nope. It's all Timberwatch elves in there. And we'll see if, uh, if Steven's plan of going wide helps him take down the black red control deck in the second game, mm -hmm. having lost a really agonizing game one to having four cards in hand. Absolutely. Ooh, tap to Barrymore. Okay, Steven actually might be in shape to win this game. Second I think so. Second combo twitches is not uh, good. Not great. Not great. Now, Sean can kill some stuff. He does have the opportunity to kill creatures. That's uh, true. I'm pretty sure the Timberwatch Elf is going to be coming down, probably both. I think, I think you're right. Although I do like the plan that lets me attack with the most creatures. Yeah, yeah. I, I think attacking, that it, attacking in a combo trick is pretty risky. Yeah, I think attacking with three threes is very important. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, maybe the rest of them, not so much. Yeah. Yeah, with the uh, with the trigger from Lasalana Huntmaster, Huntmaster, Huntmaster. Is it one hunt or two? I don't know. That's I think it's Huntmaster. Steven has indicated Huntmaster mm -hmm. on the deck list, but as you know. We can always be wrong. That's true. Goblin Quabum. Quabum? There's a, there's a problem with the goblin. Yeah. We were trying to read Goblin Caverns earlier, and it was tough. I thought it was Goblin Caves. In any case, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Steven faced with a couple decisions here. Almost certainly going to want to play that land. Going to cast at least one Tremor Watch Elf. That's going to come in with another elf mm -hmm. due, to the, due to the trigger. The Solana's best friend. That's right. But a combat going to start things out for Steven here. Sean can block. Probably bad. Probably mm -hmm. doesn't want to do that. Agreed. Agreed. We'll see what he likes to do. Yeah, even taking taking three on the chin, not so bad. The life total is relevant with both of the Quambo Twitches out on the field and the third one in Sean's hand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Having drawn off the deck. Actually, Sean has a single Crypt Rats in his deck. I noticed that. That'd be a big draw. You're right. Although, uh, Sean's constrained on mana altogether and also... Well, to be fair, he actually only needs one mana mm. to activate the Crypt Rats because he can play Crypt Rats, ping uh, for one, sweep the entire board except for the Hunt Master, ping, both, ping it twice with Kumbaj Witches. Uh, at the cost the of losing one of his own Kumbaj Witches, but still Very true, very true, very true. But, uh, you know, I think I'd be willing to take that trade. Uh, same. Permanent my opponent lose a single 1-3. So the white border elf on Steven's side of the board is a Lanoir elf. Seventh edition Lanoir elf, the best Lanoir elf art. Mm -hmm. uh, it's There's not two close. of them. Yeah, was, See, I like the tenth edition one because it's the most ridiculous. <laughs> it's just like the head of an elf, and I'm oh. like, yeah, this makes mana. That's the sixth edition one as well. Yeah. well correct. Perhaps the fifth. Maybe. And a second Timberwatch elf. Mm -hmm. Oscarine. Yeah, it means that uh, Sean is going to have to waste his both of his problems. Oh. He's going to have to waste his combo twitches at sorcery speed in order to actually destroy one of them. Yeah, absolutely. They get to protect each other. Well, not unless they die right now. Well, that's true. But one of the, one of the witches is a uh, summoning sick. Oh, right, right, right. Sean uh, gesturing with frustration mm -hmm. at uh, the explosion of elves. Yeah, not happy about that. Ah, that is summoning sick. Yeah, I think, sick. It was, I think it was last turn. Um, then what did Sean do his last turn? Oh, you're right. He terminated and then he played Kumbaj, which is yeah. absolutely right. I think they just realized that, though, as uh, the Timberwatch Elf yes. did not go to the graveyard. That's right. Uh, though it is slightly off camera. Mm -hmm. It is above the graveyard, not inside of the graveyard. Okay, good, good. Heads up from both players there mm -hmm. to keep track of the game state. 30 minutes left on the clock. Steven's in pretty commanding position, though he is going to lose one of the Timberwatch Elves this turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, this Elf deck, I'm pretty sure, is on the upper foot, but, like, the control decks, mono-black control base decks, obviously this deck isn't mono-black, but it's mm -hmm. got the same pieces that mono-black has. Yeah, it's pretty close. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of tools to come back from effects like this. Grey Merchant, not necessarily the effect needed. This is going to be a drain for six, which is a big number. It's going to swap life totals from 14 to, to 20. 20 to 14 to 20. 
but uh, again, life total not super relevant here. Mm -hmm. Sean really just needs to maintain the board and not try and end the game fast. Looks like we're going to ping that Timberwatch Elf, get that off the table when we still can. Yep. And then also going to go ahead and ping, what's the other thing? As the Both of them had to tap the Timberwatch Elf. Oh, Timberwatch Elves are two, one twos, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. I always thought they were one ones. And a well wisher the draw here. Mm -hmm. That's going to gain some life should uh, it untap. I don't think that Steven's life total is too relevant, though. I agree. I think that uh, it being a pair of 1-1s one is very relevant, though. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, that was, Steven can't really attack anymore, though, so <laughs> he uh, was really relying on that Timberwatch Elf to uh, block the game away. Yeah, yeah, really close it out. But that's not going to happen anymore. Let's see what Steven elects to do. Yeah, Steven, Steven's out of Timberwatch Elves. How did that happen? Well... I thought that they were one ones, and so I thought that Sean on the end step had attempted to ping both, but it looks yeah. like he successfully killed one, he, which yeah. means that he did ping while summoning sick, yeah. and I think we missed that. Okay. Well, I mean, we didn't miss that, but I well, yeah. I said it was okay because I misunderstood that they were one twos and not one ones, and okay. so right. one ping I thought would kill one and two pings would kill both, but it's two pings will kill one, so. Right. Okay. And I think now it's probably just a bit too late to rewind. Yeah, I think you're right, too. That's a shame. So it looks like we're gonna see an alpha strike here. Big swings. Yep. I'm gonna get to take out an elf, should he so desire. Mm -hmm. I imagine, yes, yep. an elf is, is gonna hit the bin. I'm not sure which one, probably one of the mana dorks. As the list on our is a 3 3, just a bit too big. Yeah, it could bounce with his Grey Merchant and then take six. Um, well, that's. doesn't really modify the clock very much. No, not really. I think it's worth it to take an extra two damage to get rid of one of those guys. Yeah. And I think I'd like to take out the Elvish Mystic here, as it is, as you know, the worst of the uh, mana dorks. Very true. However, if you eat the Llanowar Elves, all the cards on Steven's side of the board are black bordered. Mm, I think that's good. That's, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I prefer that. Yeah. Draws, it's a, it's a game land. Not going to be quite what he's looking for. Yeah. Always looking for extra life points. Mm -hmm. Sean does have another Grey Merchant, though. This one will drain for eight. Yeah. And Put Steven down to six. Yeah. And then, uh, that's a pretty big number. Do you think there's a case to attack with the Grey Merchant here, see if Steven takes it, and then play the second Grey Merchant? I think that if you would have to be a maniac to block, but I think that you're sacrificing, so you're you're paying one life to deal two damage, which I think is a, a fair, ooh, we bled is pretty good. Yeah. It's gonna take out the Huntmaster, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna set up, run. <laughs> Sean might just be looking to end the game in one swift kick. With. Yeah, you know, Sean actually has lethal with the Grey Merchant in play next turn, assuming he doesn't lose any more creatures. Second Combat Twitches. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, third. Third Combat Twitches, yeah. yep. Yeah. And so that'll do, uh, that'll do it. Sean does turn. have lethal next turn, so Steven has to win the game this turn or deal with this board somehow. That's right. If he draws another Distant Melody... That'd so be a huge draw. Yeah, gonna be huge. That Wellwisher gonna get taken off the battlefield. Very reasonable. Right? Very reasonable. So Wellwisher poised to, uh, to snatch victory out of Sean's hand here. Just checking chat, see what's going on in there. All right. My phone's about to die, so. 4% and the battery is flashing, which is never a good sign. That's not a good look. <laughs> I need to figure out my bus ride home, so pretty important not to run out of juice. So maybe I'm just going to go ahead and exit that Twitch app so my phone doesn't die. Yeah, Steven doing some math here, looking if he's going to go upstairs with the combat Twitch's trigger. Where else is it going? Like, <laughs> well, that's I'm not, the question. No, that's a good question. There's not a lot of good targets, and then one target that always is good. That's the face. Yeah. You either smork them or you kill one of their guys. And if you're not killing one of their guys, probably should be smorking. Yeah. Get smorked. Mm -hmm. Smork is the board. Smorks faces the place. There we go. Me hit minions? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Me go face? Yup. <laughs> Summon Misha? Nope. <laughs> Summon Huffer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Don't you worry, little head. The, de the, <laughs> the dank is hard, so he's coming to your left. Card <laughs> Kingdom. Uh, basic Island of the play for Steven here. Now he's got to think that something is afoot, as his opponent has very many black mana symbols on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah multiple. And I, can't re I, I can't really attack, as all of the creatures are one ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a 2 2, but that's mm -hmm. a little bit too late. Both these guys have a lot of devotion. That's pretty much all I know. You're right. But Reverend Hunter, oh, if he does it again, I'm going to be angry. 
I'm definitely going, know I'm going over the Kumbaj Witch is a sick this game. Hey, can y'all tell him that his Kumbaj Witch is summoning sick? Yeah. Can you tell him his Kumbaj Witch is summoning sick? One of those pings, unsuccessful. Yeah, it's just the principle, to be honest. Yeah. I stopped the last one because I misunderstood yeah. the Timberwatch Elves being 1-2 and requiring two pings to yeah, kill. Cool. Yeah, and, I, and uh, Steven having half of, having both of his Timberwatch Elves barely on camera. Yeah. Did not know. Did not know. So both players basically just gonna gain a life. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter because Shauna's gonna untap and kill his opponent, but again, it is. All right, and so Casey's going to go over and explain exactly what just happened on this board state. Looks like both players are gaining a life, so we're good here. We good, Casey. We good. They re they rewound successfully. So yeah, that Kumbaj Witch is going to get untapped, gain each player a life, and then the turn's going to get passed back to Sean. Well, I, I believe that Sean killed a creature with the Kumbaj Witches, didn't he? Uh, oh, no, no, he didn't. He, didn't. No. he went upstairs because he's trying to kill with the Grey Merchant in hand. Ah, where do you go? I like it. Sometimes you gotta smork while you have less life than your opponent. That's true. Yeah. Sean, however, now able to summon an extra three damage out of, the, out of his combo, which is then follow that up mm -hmm. with the Grey Merchant. And then she's gonna play the Grey Merchant first, otherwise, one of them could potentially be killed by triple oh. combo, which activation. That's a good point. We shall see. Uh, so we shall. Maybe what you do is you activate it once, say, do you wanna target my, my face or one of my creatures? Yeah. And then you get to know. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the things, like, uh, it can be pretty tough to kill. Kumbaj Witches because you have to target it each time. That's right. And so the Kumbaj Witches controller could intelligently just uh, not ping the third one if there's two pings already that hit the witch. That's right. So welcome back to the booth, guys. That was the final round of Swiss. We got about 20 minutes left in the round, so we're going to try and find another backup match. It can be tough, especially at this point of the tournament. A lot of people have since scrubbed out. We're no longer at the 72 players yeah. that we were at at round one. The field winnowed pretty well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Some people couldn't even. Some people can't even, and some people can't odd. Stay tuned, guys. We will be back, hopefully, with a future match in just a few minutes.